innovation and skills are the hot topic at the core of the, the, the national strategy uh, and the policy among the Western countries. China's development strategy is still about reforms, about opening up, and rarely talking about innovation. But I, I realized that one day this will be a very important uh, topic and the policy area for uh, China's development strategy. I'm Xiaolan Fu. I'm a professor of technology and uh, international development at University of Oxford. I'm also directing a center called Technology and Management Center for Development. In the recent uh, decade, the industrial policy is kind of uh, transformed in a way to a broader definition which includes also innovation policy. So in this sense, many of the countries in the world, including the US or the, the European countries, they adopted a lot of policies to encourage innovation. The early part uh, of the whole innovation chain, the research and the development part, especially research, we really need uh, government policy to, to support because innovation is very costly, it's very risky, uh, and also there are externalities normally positive externalities to benefit our other sectors and other players. In the past three decades, uh, China's fast growth and the international competitiveness has much depend on cheap labor and uh, uh, the price competitiveness. And now China really has benefited from the knowledge transfer uh, through international trade and foreign direct investment and also recently the movement of the highly skilled people, especially the returnees. However, this type of knowledge transfer and the catching up will bring you close to the frontier, but will not bring you to lift you up to the frontier. And now China has come to the stage that it realizes that it needs a transformation of the growth model and the development strategy so that the country can maintain the momentum of growth and also to move from a middle-income country to a high-income country. However, still there is a big gap between China's innovation capacity and the world's leading countries. China has been very good at using the existing technology, either it comes from foreign countries or from uh, internal. So the lessons, I think, are twofold. One is Developing countries should really uh, make efforts to benefit from external knowledge transfer. And also the second uh, uh, lesson is that uh, for middle-income countries especially, they have to do indigenous innovation and building their own capabilities so that they can become a high-income country, a leader in the world. So for China, what's its lack of is the capacity to produce original innovation from research and the development from within, from the domestic sector. The next step forward is to using the ideas, both from internal and external, to produce uh, more new products. There are a serious obstacles for China in terms of innovation, uh, uh, in terms of capability, in terms of incentives, in terms of institution. In my view, the main problem for China now need to solve uh, is about incentives. Investors in the private sector, in the recent two years, many of them are very hesitated to invest in manufacturing, let alone to invest in, 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 in innovation. They are looking for the quick you know, money return, um, invest in real estate sector, we see the house uh, uh, pricing bubble, and all in the um, stock market. And some are trying to transfer their money outside of China. This reflects the lack of incentive to allocate the resources to innovation to manufacturing sector. The classic uh, study of innovation starts from Schubert's uh, theory about uh, constructive destruction. Uh, in the future for innovation research, we need to see more uh, multidisciplinary research that economists, political scientists, uh, and, uh, and the management business scholars can work together because innovation is a system engineering. Very often we see papers purely using uh, uh, economic approach, but uh, I think bring some, uh, some case study evidence to, to explain what's behind the relationship, what's behind the estimate coefficient will really help us to understand uh, what's happening.